In today's video, we are going to talk about Ubuntu, translated as I am because we are, as a way of life that stresses the importance of community and solidarity. Ubuntu speaks about our interconnectedness. You can't be human all by yourself. We think of ourselves far too frequently as just individuals separated from one another. Ubuntu means we are all connected and what we do affects the whole world. When we do well, it spreads out. It is for the whole of humanity. At the end of this video, I will share a beautiful poem by Patricia Fleming about living from a place of connection with others. Enjoy! Hi, it's Monica, your intuitive trauma transformation coach who helps you face and successfully navigate through the storms of life guiding you through a most powerful self-healing process and teaching you all the mindfulness tools you need to embark on your journey to your core self and create the life you've always envisioned. Ubuntu is a cultural worldview that tries to capture the essence of what it means to be caring and sharing. Ubuntu is about the art of being a human person. In Germany we would call it Menschlichkeit. It is the total opposite of being selfish and self-centered. It promotes cooperation between individuals, cultures and nations. Ubuntu thus empowers all to be valued to reach their full potential in accord with all around them. The following are practical examples of Ubuntu behavior. The way one talks, positive words uttered in a calm and positive manner. The way one walks, relaxed and confident. The way one smiles naturally and heartily. The way one treats others with utmost respect and honor, especially elders, children and those in need. And the way one greets, seeing others for who they are in an unconditional and non-judgmental way by hugging and genuinely inquiring about the other's well-being and then listening. And finally, the way one practices moral values such as caring, sharing, respect, gratitude, compassion in daily life, believing and feeling that your pain is my pain, my wealth is your wealth, your salvation is my salvation. There are two stories I want to tell today and perhaps you've already heard them as they circle through the world wide web. But just listen, reflect and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. In the Ubuntu tribe of South Africa, when someone does something wrong, they take the person to the center of the village. There, the tribe surrounds the individual for two days while members of the tribe speak all of the good that they have done in their lifetime. The tribe believes each person is good, yet sometimes people make mistakes which actually are cries for help. They unite in this ritual to encourage the person to reconnect with their true nature. 
The belief is that unity and affirmation are more powerful to change behavior than shaming or punishment. Think for a moment. What would happen if we raised our children like that? The second story is about an anthropologist who had been studying the habits and culture of a remote African tribe. He had been working in the village for quite some time and the day before he was to return home, he put together a gift basket filled with delicious fruit from all around the region. He placed the basket under a tree, drew a line in the dirt and gathered up the children in the village. He looked at them and said, when I tell you to start from this line, run to the tree as fast as you can and whoever gets there first will win the whole basket filled with fruit. When he told them to run, they all took each other's hands and ran together to the tree. Then they sat together around the basket and enjoyed the sharing of this gift as a group. The anthropologist was very surprised. He asked why they would all go together when one of them could have won all the fruit for themselves. A young girl looked at him and said, how can one of us be happy if all the other ones are sad? Think a moment. What would happen if we lived according to this beautiful philosophy? How would our world change? Could there still be war, segregation or racism? I truly doubt it. Before I share the beautiful poem called One for All and All for One by Patricia A. Fleming, please click on subscribe, give me a thumbs up and share this video on social media. If you don't want to miss my videos premiering every Wednesday at 11.55 a.m., please hit the bell as well. Thank you. In the neighborhood where I was raised, my life revolved around my friends. And each day brought new adventures and endless games of let's pretend. We were just a band of misfits running wild in the sun, living by our mantra, one for all and all for one. Now, Ivy was a little girl who lived next door to me. She was a sweet and guileless girl who was a loyal friend indeed. But poor Ivy had a stutter. So even in the midst of play, we'd stop and listen patiently if Ivy had something to say. It never had occurred to us to tease her or make fun. She was a cherished part of us. One for all and all for one. Now Tammy was an aimless girl who dreaded going home. Instead, she'd cling to all of us or roam the streets alone. She was always seen as strange or odd, so by many she was shunned. But we embraced her strength of spirit. One for all and all for one. Terry and Peggy were sisters, and just as tough as they could come. 
they always were ready to stand and fight before they would cower and run. In the neighborhood, they were infamous known and feared by everyone. But we welcomed their grit and moxie, one for all and all for one. Now Dougie was just into puberty and was viewed as a very bad seed. He was in and out of trouble and always full of tricks and schemes. But to us, he was our brother and a better brother there was none. For he'd defend us to the bitter end, one for all and all for one. Now, I was a puny, cross-eyed kid who had always been laughed at and teased. But I found my niche in this group of friends who nurtured and watched out for me. We were truly a band of misfits when all was said and done. But we stood for each other through thick and thin, one for all and all for one. How I wished today our youth could know such camaraderie, second to none, finding strength and unity in diversity, living one for all and all for one. Peace begins with me. Namaste, namaste. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.